Here we're gonna look at a nice number theory problem that uses factorization of polynomials in its solution. So our goal is to show for all integers greater than one, we have n to the n minus one minus one is divisible by n minus one squared. And the big hint here that we probably wanna look at this like a polynomial is the fact that we've got our variable as a base and in the exponent. But if we replace one of those appearances of our variable n with like an indeterminate x, then we can maybe factor it a little bit easier. And that's exactly what we want to do. And here we're going to use the following fact, which I won't prove, but it follows from, from the standard formula for the sum of a finite geometric series. And that says that x to the m minus 1 factors like x minus 1 times x to the m minus 1 plus x to the m minus 2 plus all the way down to x plus 1. And that's true for all real numbers or really complex numbers x. Okay, so now let's move into this problem right here. So here's what I want to do. I want to, like I said before, envision this as a polynomial factorization problem. So I'm going to take n to the n minus 1 minus 1 and think of it like x to the n minus 1 minus 1 evaluated at x equals n. Okay, but now using our fact, we can factor one copy of x minus 1 out of this right hand side. So notice that this equals x minus 1 times x to the n minus 2 plus x to the n minus 3 all the way up to x plus 1 like that. But now evaluating that at x equals n, we see immediately that we have like a partial solution. So we're not all the way there, but we see that n minus 1 divides n to the n minus 1 minus 1. In other words, n to the n minus 1 minus 1 is divisible by n minus 1, but maybe not n minus 1 squared. So how to get that n minus 1 squared instead of just n minus 1? We want to revisit this polynomial argument up here, but then try to factor out another x minus 1 from this leftover term. So let's maybe underline that and try to divide by another copy of x minus 1. And let's see what we get when we do that. Okay, so I'm going to do that with polynomial long division. So I've got x minus 1 is dividing into x to the n minus 2 plus x to the n minus 3 plus all the way down to x plus 1 like that. And we're going to do just some pattern recognition in order to get our quotient and remainder. So how do we attain an x to the n minus 2 term? Well, we need to multiply x minus 1 by x to the n minus 3. Okay, so that's going to give us x to the n minus 2 minus x to the n minus 3. Okay, good. But now we need to subtract those terms off. And that's going to give us a 2x to the n minus 3 here. And then we need to bring everything else down. So plus x to the n minus 4 all the way down to x plus 1. Okay, good. So next what we have to do is multiply by 2x to the n minus 4 to cancel out this largest exponent term that's left over. So let's do that. So this is plus 2 times x to the n minus 4. That leaves us with 2 times x to the n minus 3 minus 2 times x to the n minus 4. But now doing that subtraction, we are left with 3 times x to the n minus 4 plus all the way down up to x plus 1. Okay, but then that tells us that we need to add a 3x to the n minus 5 here. But now this pattern will continue until our linear term will be attached to an n minus 3, and then our constant term will be n minus 2. But then if our constant term for our quotient is n minus 2, then that means our remainder will be n minus 2 plus 1, in other words, n minus 1. So let's write that here. So our remainder is the number n minus 1. 
but that's okay because we're dividing an n minus two degree polynomial by a degree one polynomial. So that leaves us with a quotient, which is a degree n minus three polynomial and a remainder, which is a constant, in other words, a degree zero polynomial. So let's summarize this calculation over here. We have x to the n minus two plus x to the n minus three all the way down to x plus one is equal to x minus one times x to the n minus three plus two x to the n minus four all the way down to n minus two plus our remainder which is n minus one. Okay, so let's maybe bring that fact to the top of the board and then we'll finish this off. So on the last board, we arrived at two facts. So this one is the basic fact that we had at the beginning, which was essentially the sum of a finite geometric series. So x to the n minus one minus one factors like x minus one times x to the n minus two plus all the way down to one. Then furthermore, we could write via a quotient and remainder of polynomials, x to the n minus two plus x to the n minus three, all the way down to x plus one, as x minus one times x to the n minus three plus two, x to the n minus four plus three, x to the n minus five, all the way down to n minus three x plus n minus two, and then our remainder was n minus one. So let's maybe go ahead and introduce some notation. Let's call this thing maybe P of X, just because we're gonna need that in the end. And now let's push these two facts together that we've already developed. So we've got X to the N minus one minus one is equal to X minus one times, well, it's gonna be times this thing right here. But notice that this guy right here which I'm underlining in green, can be rewritten with the right-hand side of this equation using our notation P of X just to make it a little simpler. So that's gonna be X minus one times P of X plus N minus one. Okay, and I wanna point out here that it's very important to notice that P of X is a polynomial with integer coefficients. And we did that by construction, although I think there's a non-constructive solution to this that maybe uses some theorems on the factorization of integer polynomials, but I'll let you guys look those up if you need to. So I've notated that by P of X is an element of Z adjoin X, so that's the space of polynomials with integer coefficients. Okay, great. So now we're gonna take this equation and then evaluate it at x equals n. So let's see what that gives us. So here we've got x equals n over here and we're gonna set x equal to n on the right hand side. So that gives us n to the n minus one minus one equals n minus one times n minus one p of n plus n minus one. Let's, let's maybe put this n minus one in parentheses so we see we can factor it out and we're gonna be left with n minus one squared times p of n plus one, which is what we get after we factor n minus one out of this second set of parentheses. But now this finishes our goal of showing that n to the n minus one minus one is divisible by n minus one squared. And that's a good place to stop.